Welcome, viewers. This is Winch here. I want to show you a couple scores of two games I got. Uh, th this first score, I did not record this gameplay. I wish I did. It's it, This gameplay was probably a little bit better than the gameplay I'm about to show you. Uh, but this is still good gameplay nonetheless. Uh, but these are two matches I played, uh, high-level ticket matches, uh, long-duration matches, which, of course, I've cut down in duration. And uh, I want to talk about this tactic, C4, as well as the uh, M27 IAR. Um, now you're gonna hear a little bit of background chatter with my uh, uh, squad mates. Uh, that's uh, that I recorded during these this uh, first gameplay. Uh, so I hope that doesn't conflict too much with my uh, voice as I uh, discuss my tactics throughout this match on Team Deathmatch Operation Firestorm. And I'll slow down the gameplay. I'm gonna give you a lot of stills and talk about uh, what good players do uh, to capitalize on certain situations. And I also want to discuss in depth the M27 here, as well as, uh, again, C4. I want to touch on that. Now, first of all, I want to admit I may have gotten it wrong, <laughs> and I apologize. Uh, one thing about this game, guys, uh, you can have thousands of kills with a gun and still not understand it. And the M27 is a perfect example of this with me. Um, uh, before, I mean, I, I, I've always preached about how much I like this gun, and check this kill out. L look what Need for Speed is about to do to me here. This is a great player in my clan. Look at this range, I'm inside a building here, in cover, and he's about to just wipe me out with the gun. And what gun could do this? Oh, the M5K, well that's interesting. We're gonna have to revisit that at some point. So I've been playing with that gun a little bit, it's, uh, it's piqued my interest a little bit. But what I want to talk about with the M27 um, and where I may have been mistaken about the uh, the gun itself is with having this gun with a grip and maybe my overall analysis of the grip. I was looking at again simthick.com, which is a great stat or a great website for stats, and uh, I was looking at the aimed accuracy of the uh, of basically any weapon, but the M27 in particular. Right here, look at this situation. I just took fire from this guy, um, wounded, suppressed, what am I going to do? I'm just going to throw out C4 here to try to quickly get away from him, let him come to me, and it, it, again, I'm going to be showing you lots of examples with C4 in this match. Um, this is just one of many. And again, let's do it one more time here. I know they're in here. Look, I saw at least three guys right here. I took out one, I'm suppressed, I'm damaged. What do you want to do in this situation? You going to peek that corner again and, you know, risk, risk uh, dying? I'm not. I'm going to throw out C4 here again. I'm going to use this shrubbery, lay down prone, so I'm basically almost invisible, and take out two more guys with C4. So, one thing I want to kind of hit home with uh, this gameplay is I want to talk about a topic called risk, uh, risk uh, mitigation. Reducing your risk, because that's what increases your survivability. If you can analyze a situation and determine, you know, what's what's my most likely uh, method of dealing with a pot potential conflict and surviving with it. If you can run that scenario through your mind before you take action and do it quickly and effectively, you can play really smart in this game. Again, here, throwing that out. I, uh, even if, if I don't pull it right away, I've got that C4 there just in case the team spawns in there. I'm ready. Right here, here's a guy around that corner. I know the limitations of my weapon, the M27. You know, do I want to run around this corner with a guy that has an F2000? No, I'm not going to win that engagement at that range. Or there's there's more risk for me to die in that situation as opposed to just throwing out C4 there and disposing of him quickly. Now, uh, in some of my videos, people kind of are... I, I'm used to taking uh, criticism. That's just part of the game here with, uh, with posting content on YouTube. Oh, right here again, watching behind my back. I saw that guy on the mini-map behind me. That's why I'm like... I'm really high in the world in terms of raking with savior ribbons. I'm always conscientious of where my team, my uh, fellow teammates are, and by just quickly uh, keep an eye on that mini map all the time, quickly turn around and suppose that guy saved my my teammate. But what I'm trying to say here is I'm used to taking criticism with YouTube. That's just part of the game, and I, I've I've taken some criticism lately. Again, another example here. I just I can't get in here and talk without showing you all these examples. I know there's a guy in there. I got a little corridor to throw some C4 in. It's just that much quicker. It's that much easier. Is that a noob tactic? And that's what I'm trying to get at. Uh, people are being critical of my gameplay, how it's evolved here the last oh few weeks, and saying that this C4 stuff is newbie. Now, uh, you know, in particular, what they're making reference to is when I do like a jihad type of suicide bomber. You know, I go in there and 
throw out C4, kill a couple players, or maybe just one player, and detonate it, kill myself and the enemy player. Well, yeah, maybe that's not too effective with a one-on-one -on -one type engagement, but there's still situations where maybe you're heavily suppressed, your your health is really low, you know, I got a, I got a support class weapon, I'm not going to win that engagement, but with the C4, it certainly gives me an advantage. But certainly if I run in there, I take out two or three guys with C4, you know, I still argue that's an effective use of my equipment. If you can cha exchange two or three guys for one kill, oh, now you see me? Mm, now you don't. <laughs> I think we've caused some rage quitting here uh, as this game starts evolving. And, and this gameplay does get progressively better as the game uh, goes on here, so I encourage you to keep watching. Because uh, you're going to see a lot of good gameplay, and I'm going to really get in depth here about some advanced tactics uh, in terms of utilizing equipment and cover and your weapon. And um, so anyway, again, people real critical about the Jihad C4, which again, I, I, I mean, it's not something I'm particularly, you know, uh, I'm not like, oh yeah, you know, I just killed myself. Uh, yeah, you know, it's not like I go around trolling people C4, you know, intentionally. You know, if I find myself a boxed-in scenario where, you know, it's my last-ditch resort, um, and I can take out another player or two, as opposed to just losing a gunfight, I'm going to use my equipment to my advantage, and I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take one for the team. Yes, it sucks dying, but again, it, it rewards you by at least getting one more kill, whereas you may not be able to pull that off if you just want to do a strict gunfight or switch your pistol or, you know, you're out of time. Right here, look at this. Me versus an M16A3. This is an ex excellent player in my clan. Need for speed. We trade kills. So with the M27, this went toe-to-toe -to -toe at good range, and uh, it held its own. Now, in the past, I've really preached about a, a grip on this weapon, and this is where I want to talk just about the stats really quickly. Basically, if you throw a grip on this, the aim down sight accuracy with this weapon, um, it's half as good as it is without it. So with, with just a heavy barrel on this gun, your aim down sight accuracy is 0.2. Now, if you throw a grip on there, it becomes... Uh, it becomes, what is it, 3, excuse me, yeah, point, point 0.3, if I'm reading the stat right, hold on a second, I'm sorry, now I was looking at the hip, it's point 0.2 versus point 0.5, so it's over double your your spread with a grip on this thing, so, you know, accuracy is everything in this game, and so I might be wrong on this, and, and I've, I've had two, lots of great matches, I've picked up a thousand kills with this gun lately with this setup, Look at this. We got guys in here. What are you going to do here? You know, they're in here and covered up. Knock, knock. You know, who's home? This is what's great about this game. Moments like this in Battlefield 3, where you reward yourself for smart gameplay, there's nothing else that matches this. And that's one criticism I have about Medal of, Medal of Honor Warfighter, which I, I, I think it's looking better the more gameplay I see of it. But if I don't have destructibility like this, where I can't use... Uh, you know, equipment and, you know, making holes and walls and stuff like that. That's, that's a big drawback of Metal of Honor Warfare. I'm really disappointed about. But it might still be a good game. I've seen some gameplay that looks pretty good. But again, situations like that where you can think outside the box and just kind of catch guys off guard, uh, it's really rewarding in this game. It's a lot of fun. I never I never tire of it. And it's, it's just... It's just I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Lots of fun. Right here, what could this happen? I just took a lot of suppressive fire. I got some bullets on him. I'm not going to peek that corner again. I've got li basically no health at all. Suppress and go back around. Crouch, da crouch down. Use this little brush over here. Just get a, you know, basically a survey and be very cautious. What about here? We can peek between these two little barrel things. It's always about using cover. It's really difficult for enemy to see you in a situation like this. And even if they do, you still have lots of cover. Cover is everything in this game, and that's something that can never be preached enough. Now, in this situation, this is what's great about this, Matt, uh, Operation Firestorm. Look at all these skull and crossbones. That's my teammates dead. I'm over here by myself. Charging in here again, knowing the limitations of my weapon, it's not going to be good at hip fire. It's not going to be good. The time to kill is horrible at close range like this. But with C4 and these containers, it's dangerous corridors for players. Watching this, I'm basically on everybody's radar at this point in time. So I'm going to throw down C4 here again. And uh, I apologize. Let's see if this uh, footage catches up here. Okay. I'm sorry. I lagged up there a little bit with my uh, uh, recording. But uh, anyway, throwing down C4 there, and I got another kill there. Push up there to the enemy, and uh, unfortunately, I, I did get killed in the back again. Right here again at this position. 
killed uh, speed right between those barrels again. Uh, that, that <laughs> it, n not picking on him at all. He, he killed me lots of times this gameplay. Uh, he was a very formal opponent. We had a lot of fun playing against each other. But again, here, look, I mean, look at this situation. Look at my cover right here. Inside of this uh, this little office, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, this not going to be charging out in the open where I'm going to be bait for an assault weapon, you know, or a, a sniper. Basically, in here, I can go full auto with lots of cover, get, dish out lots of damage, lots of suppressive fire, flank around the team. Now, see, situations like that where this one full auto at that range, it's not that accurate still. You know, I really need to be burst firing in those situations. But a lot of times, what I'm doing in those kind of situations where, where people are critical of my accuracy is I'm just trying to dish out suppressive fire. This gun still has a support class role. Now, here again, I'm pushing up here, and I see, look at this. This is a problem. There's a need for speed reviving a guy uh, on his squad. This is what's difficult about assault when you're taking assault guys. You kill them, but then a guy can just quickly revive them, and at this range, it's, it's a lot going on. So I got the whole team over here, and now one of my teammates is about to block me here in a second. But look what Speed just did. He went in there. This is what good players do. He went in there. He, he recognized I was laying it down over there. He went over there. He used cover. He peeked out that little that cover area, and he was waiting for me. Um, so he, he knew when to pull back and take advantage of, of my exposure. And granted, it was kind of bad luck on my part because a teammate came up here and blocked me from being able to retreat back behind cover. But that's what you got to do. He, he recognized it, and he, I see him do it all the time. You know, he knows when to pull back, reassess, reflank, use cover. That's what good players do, and, and he's, he's certainly one of the best I've played against. Again here, uh, this weapon, just quickly, I mean, I just want to show those last two kills there, where this gun just medium range to, and then quickly you can just reassess to your right with plenty of rounds left to... Uh, to uh, utilize for enemy players. And I'll, I'll show an example why, again, support is really good in those kind of situations. Now right here, I see him back there. I see him in that quarter. So what was I trying to do? I was trying to do that again. I guarantee I would have got at least two more of them had that guy had not been chasing me. And I mean, that's one thing that's frustrating about C4. You can throw it down, but you can't always detonate it immediately. Here again, look at this position. I'm kind of between the, the trailer and the uh, engine on this uh, tractor trailer right here. And that's a great position for cover. Look at the guys to my right. Uh, my squad mates died because they went around that corner as opposed to using cover. It's always cover versus cover. Y you know, your weapon versus enemy's weapon, knowing the limitations of both. And using your weapon's advantages to outplay the, the, the uh, enemy player's weapon. Now here we got momentum. We pushed him back. And we'll push up here and, and go on in there. And we went on to uh, track down a few more guys. You, oh my God. <laughs> Look at this. Uh, I'm sorry. I, that, that must be later on. So, oh yeah, here it, here it comes. So here's speed. I got some hits on him. Come around here. I swear I get that nice wipe. I did get a nice wipe. So I hit him with bullets. And I got a knife on him. And he still didn't die. But my, uh, players came, my teammates came back around and, and helped me out there. Finished my job. So, you know, with Team Deathmatch, it's really likely when you kill a player uh, that they're going to respawn quickly, like there. There he is again, and, and come right back at you. Uh, that's, some, that's a fact of the game with Team Deathmatch, um, but that, that's what contributes to his fast-paced action. Now, right here again, taking fire. I'm not going to peek out there again. I'm going to pull back with C4. Lau, my, sometimes you just got to rely on your teammates to come help you out, and that's what I did in that situation. And uh, then I turned around and helped another teammate out. So again, that's this example of teamwork working all in unison. I don't know how that guy survived that C4 blast, because uh, that certainly should have taken him out. But again, that was a good placement on C4 in the event that they did, you know, get close to me. I had that. I have that ace in the hole, so to say. Again, here in this example, it's about being aware of everything going around you 360 degrees all the time. Even though I'm distracted here and I'm taking suppressive fire from this guy. I don't have time for break. I gotta watch this mini map while I'm shooting this guy. These are the tactics you have to formulate on the fly and be aware of. You know, what do you think that guy's trying to do behind me? He's trying to come behind me and shoot me in the back. So just because you're you locked in battle with the guy head on, don't don't get tunnel vision. You gotta keep your scan going about you with the mini map. Mini map, mini map. It's real important. Now I guess in hardcore we have the option of uh, removing the mini map. Which I've yet to really play. I don't play much hardcore. I have in the past, mainly because it's a team killing I don't like friendly fire with RPGs, grenades, that kind of thing. And I also um, don't like the the sniping. It turns the game into a giant snipe fest. Um, 
which is realistic. I'm not going to be critical of it, but it's just not my personal gameplay um, preference. Now, right here, this is a <laughs> this is me getting a little bit lucky because this guy has a cover advantage. Uh, but the M27 still pull off those kills now with this again with a heavy barrel. This gun's it can go toe to toe with a lot of assault class weapons as as I demonstrated. Uh, with half the aimed accuracy penalty as opposed to this with a grip. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm really kind of embarrassed to say I think I may have been wrong all these all, all, all these months with this setup. Again, re re um, reassess targets behind me. I mean, I was knife bait right there. If I would have just kept focusing on guys ahead of me and not paying attention to minimap, uh, you know guys are always be coming for you when you're you know a dominating force on on your team. Uh, you know, you're kind of the high priority target. People know where you're at, particularly when you kill them on Team Deathmatch, because they're going to go right back to that spot. I do it too. And so that's something you need to learn, if, is if you kill enemy players, um, or if you're killed by an enemy player, you got to move. You can't stay in the same place for long, or else people are going to come right back to you and take advantage of your predictability. So moving on the fly is real important. Now here I picked up uh, Matt's kit, I believe, or who was this kit? I'm sorry, Paskey's kit. And uh, he's a big A94 fan, and this is certainly a great gun. I got a couple thousand kills with this gun, but went on here to uh, to pick up quite a few more kills with this weapon. And, uh, so I'll speed up this clip a little bit here as we kind of move on to the next uh, spawn area. Pick up a few more kills. But again, you know, this is one of the things I kind of, I mean, I don't like to boast or anything, but again... Um, being able to pick up a guy's kit like this and go on and get keep your kill streak going and keep getting kills, that's a pretty valuable skill you should have in this game. There's lots of good guns in this game. I'm not just to say you should stick with one gun. Certainly some guns are better than all others, but I think all guns in this game at least excel in one particular area. So if you know how to understand how a gun works um, and you're comfortable with that and if you actually use the gun, you have a lot of... Um, there's a lot to offer from Battlefield 3. You know, it's not like you just have to use one gun, which I remember my Call of Duty days where, you know, you would just see one gun being run the whole time. A UMP 45 in Modern Warfare 2, the MP40 in World at War, you know, the M16 in, in Call of Duty 4. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what it was in Black Ops, I can't remember. But, you know, there's always one gun in one of these games that you know, are Call of Duty games. That's one thing I was real critical of Call of Duty. You know, everybody would just use a Battlefield 3, you have dozens of guns that are all good to use. Now right here, look, I just saw a guy run off to my left. Guy got bipoded up. Again, what's quicker sometimes? You know, sometimes C4 can be quicker than shooting your gun. And time's everything sometimes when you're up in, you know, an enemy spawn. There's that guy that ran left of me. Uh, you know, quickly throwing out C4 sometimes would just be quicker than killing a guy. And, you know, sometimes you get lucky, too. I didn't I didn't understand that, realize at the time that there was another guy right next to that guy, so I actually got a double kill with C4. Now, remember that score I showed you at the beginning of this uh, game was actually Operation Metro, and I did not record it, but, I mean, I, I got over 100 kills in that, that game mode, and I would I'd probably estimate that at least two dozen of those kills were C4. And it wasn't Jihad C4. Again, it was, you know, throwing out windows... Putting in people's um, you know high traffic areas. Oh, look at this kill again. Me against Need for Speed. Look at this range. You know him in a building. Headshot. You know stopping his killing spree. This gun still can do it. Uh, the M27 is a very accurate support class gun. Again, this in the last few days I've been running with this gun. I've already picked up a thousand kills with it. Uh, I really really transformed me again or my opinion of this gun because lately before this I was like you know, I just could not really figure this gun out. The recoil's high, it still is with the heavy barrel. That's a you know, negative effect of throwing heavy barrel on this gun as you increase the recoil just a little bit. But again, a .2 uh, aimed accuracy penalty is, is pretty darn good for a support class weapon. Uh, I mean, that's right up there again. Now look at this situation. Speed, this killed my, my player. He, he's got an M16. What do you think happened here? Well, more likely, I would bet you, I would bet you that he ran out of ammo. And that, again, that's the problem with the assault class. You get in there, you can't make every bullet count. So he killed my my uh, teammate, but then he, you know he's pulling the trigger at me, and he's out of bullets. You know, and then again, that's a big criticism I always have assault class weapons, particularly fully automatic high fire rate weapons like that. That they're good for one kill, you know, maybe two if you're accurate. But uh, you know, if you, if you get off ca caught off guard, if a guy spawns or something like that, I mean, you're pretty much SOL.
All right, getting here. I'm pushing up. Lots of activity. You know, these containers is almost like no North Shore canals. Look at these points. I'm gonna take a moment to stop this. Uh, was that almost 700 points? So you just saw me got a light machine gun ribbon. I mean, assault class can get a lot of points when you throw out ammo crates in the, in the right spot. So always, always throw out ammo. It's another criticism I always used to take in my older videos when. That's a tactic I really didn't employ that often, was throwing out uh, ammo. Again, here in these containers, I mean, you see there, I just got lots of bullets on that guy. This gun at uh, close range, it's not like an M416 or anything like that. It, it's certainly weak. But I was, you know, a desperate act. I pulled out the knife, and I managed to pull off the front knife on that situation. Here again, here's a mistake I made. Didn't realize that there was two guys bipoded up back there, so, you know, when you, <laughs> that's the great thing about this game. When you don't when you don't pay attention to what's going on around you, more likely you're going to lose. But that pretty much wraps up this gameplay. We'll pull off here, I think, the final kill. No, I didn't get the final kill, but good gameplay nonetheless. I hope you guys enjoyed some of those, uh, those slowdown clips. Remember, C4 is not just for trolling. It's not a noob tactic. And it's something I've, I mean, I've got over a couple hundred kills here in the last, uh, you know, basically week of gameplay with this C4, using it wisely, and it, it puts you on top. So please like and subscribe to the video, guys, it helped you out, we'll have more to come. And remember about the M27, it's still a great weapon, just throw a heavy barrel on there, you're good to go.